Hello everyone, and welcome to this Lightship presentation, interpreting the FIPS object module, FIPS test suite. What is the FIPS test suite, you ask? To get the answer, we need to go back in time a little, all the way back to about 2003, when the development of an OpenSSL module conforming to FIPS 140-2 was under very active development. Since then, there have been several open source and private label validations using the module. Many developers and technology companies that use cryptography are familiar with the FIPS object module and many are already familiar with this test suite. In the early days of testing the module for FIPS compliance, the developers at OpenSSL decided to create the test suite in order to easily exercise all implemented cryptography and self-tests. Some of the included self-tests are related to the mandatory power-up self-test dictated by FIPS 140-2, while others deal with the conditional testing. Having the test suite available in every FIPS validated version of the module was instrumental in assisting CST laboratories and module developers in ensuring that the cryptographic self-tests were implemented correctly. In a previous video, we demonstrated how to build the object module. In that video, we showed that the make build tests command instructed the build process to compile the test suite and link it against the object module. This step created a binary that could be easily executed to activate the test suite. You'll find the test suite source code located in the FIPS directory once you've extracted the tarball. For instructions on building the test suite, please refer to our other video about building the FIPS object module. Let's now execute the test suite and have a look at the output. This will take a few seconds since a few of the tests are intensive. You can see that the test suite runs through a series of tests and generates output without any operator intervention. The results show that most of the tests are geared to have a positive outcome, and some are designed to automatically induce specific failures. If we back up to the beginning, we can see that the test suite begins with the HMAC base software integrity test, and then proceeds to execute the various known answer tests for all symmetric algorithms. Later in the sequence, the conditional tests are performed, such as the pairwise consistency tests for the asymmetric algorithms. From there, the results of the key zeroization test and DRBG health check are shown. Then, the test suite executes the induced failures for each algorithm. Another useful feature of the test suite is to perform some fault induction testing from the command line. By providing some simple command line parameters, you can easily cause something like a known answer test to fail, or even a continuous random number generator test. Here's an example of an induced failure of the AES known answer test. Here's an example of a failed pairwise test on the DSA algorithm. As you can see in the test suite source code, there are a number of manual fault inductions that you can perform, including a stuck entropy source, as well as a stuck random bit generator. That wraps up our short tutorial on the FIPS test suite. Please remember to click the subscribe button to see future Lightship videos. Thanks for watching.